Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9 GP, and after a long absence from my YouTube channel, I'm back. Got some things coming up in the future, as you can imagine. If uh, you watched any of my out of the park baseball playthroughs last year, we got the new version 21 about to release in a couple of weeks. Uh, so stay tuned for that in the future. I plan on doing at least one, maybe two playthroughs of that when it comes out to so show maybe some first look type videos. But I wanted to get back to the channel. It's kind of staying with uh, the sports management sims. It's not the only games that I play, but I really, I've always, uh, from the first computer I ever bought, I've always been playing sports management games on PC. And I picked up a new one just released, I think either yesterday or, or today. It's uh, from a company called Wolverine Studios. It's a small independent developer. Uh, but they've got a good lineup of sports management games, and I've been wanting to try them and, and showcase them on my channel in the past, but they just released their newest college basketball program. It's uh, Draft Day College ba Draft Day Sports College Basketball version 20, and uh, I'm, I'm new to this version, but I did pick up 19 last fall, played a few seasons with it, and kind of liked it. I, I, I think there's some potential there. Uh, I didn't put it on the channel because Almost as soon as I started uh, playing it, I found out that they were going to be making some pretty big updates to the newer version when it comes out, which is this 20 that I have today. So I thought I would wait until it came out and take some time and put it on my channel and see what you guys think. Uh, see if you feel like I do that this is a, a pretty good option for sports management sim fans. And if you like basketball or don't, I think you'll probably get some enjoyment out of it. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I picked up... Um, a team here. Uh, there's a couple of modes that you can play in, a challenge mode and a sandbox mode, and I'm playing in the challenge mode, which means that uh, I've got some um, I've got some goals I've got to meet if I want to keep my job. I figured that would be a lot more um, fun, but ultimately what I want to do is maybe work my way up prestige-wise and reputation-wise and maybe get a, a, a good job at maybe a rebuilding team in a one of those top tier um, conferences. But for, for now, what I did is I picked kind of a low to mid-major type conference, the Ohio Valley Conference, and I'm going with Austin P. Uh, it's Austin P. State University, but the Austin P. Governors. It's a team that's um, fairly close to where I live. I've got some ties to it. I thought it would be a fun challenge to kind of pick up this team and see what I could do with it. And um, I've already simmed ahead until we're at November 13th. We're about to play our first game in a couple of days. But this game, it starts when you first pick it up. You're going to start, I think, around May. And you go through a lot of off-season things, mainly recruiting. And I've got to say, recruiting is a big aspect of this game. Uh, it's probably make or break, really. If you can't get the recruiting nailed down, you're going to have a hard time, I think, uh, competing, building a good program. But I didn't want to go too in-depth on that because, uh, I don't know, it's a lot of menus back and forth. If you you know, a lot, of, a lot of reports, a lot of different tasks that you have to do. And I thought I would kind of work my way into that maybe here and there as we go along and then into the next uh, off-season if I stay with this playthrough that long. But the recruiting is really, I find it pretty enjoyable. I don't think it's like a click fest or anything like that. I do think, I do think there's some strategy involved with the recruiting. It's just that it's very difficult to do. But first things first, I want to I want to take a look at the team that we have, the Austin P. Governors. And the big thing, and it's why recruiting is so important on this team for sure, is I feel like there's a good balance with this team. Um, if you look at the overall ratings, and this is on a five scale, I got several guys here, three and a half stars, one three star, two and a half. <clears throat> I think for this conference, I've probably got a pretty balanced team. But if you look at the breakdown on positions, my point guard's a senior, three and a half stars. My um, shooting guard, two seniors. Uh, so I'm going to lose both these guys, and that's the only depth I have at that position. And then, um, what is it, small forward? I've got not too bad of a situation there. I've got a sophomore who's probably going to get the starting Roll. He's three stars. Power forward. Once again, my best player <clears throat> in the, uh, the power forward. He's a three and a half star senior. Going to lose him next year. And then 
center is a big problem, I think, because I've got – it's probably the weakest position in the, in the starting lineup, two and, a half guy, two and a half stars, and he's a senior. And the only backup – sophomore one and a half stars I'm really weak at center so I'm probably not going to have a much of an inside game I'm hoping that some of these guys can like shooting guards and uh, point guards can uh, be good from outside you know hopefully that they'll uh, provide most of the scoring for me <clears throat> but if you look at the schedule which came out not too long ago in, in game we got 11 games before we get to our conference schedule and it's a pretty good mix. Uh, one of the things when you start out the season, you get a message from your athletic director asking you what kind of schedule you want. You can have like a pushover type schedule. You can have a really tough schedule or you can have kind of a balanced schedule. I went with balanced. And so you can see team like uh, Mississippi State is going to be tough for us to beat. Fresno State, Memphis Tigers. Uh, there's some pretty decent teams in there. Some teams that we're probably comparable to. But I'm hoping if we can get through these 11 games with, say, six wins would be ultimate, would the ultimate goal, uh, I think we might have a good shot. Um, if I went to, I think it's when I look at my office, yeah, this is going to show me the goals that I have uh, for this year. I've got to finish in the top three of the conference and finish above 500. So I think it's going to really depend how those first 11 games go, and the second goal I might meet, the first goal is going to be tough. <clears throat> Playing that previous version of uh, 19, I had a tough time to build a, a winning team with that. I, I chose the same team, Austin P, and I think it took me three seasons before I even got to, to a winning record, but it's, uh, it's, it's a challenge for sure. But looking back at the dashboard, a couple other things I wanted to point out here. Uh, these these numbers down here, like the stats and things, the leaders, those will uh, pick up as the team goes on. But it gives you your next opponent with a kind of a matchup chart there, or graph, however you want to say it. Um, kind of shows you what the scouting report is on the team, how you match up, and what your chances are to win. So we're going to be playing St. Mary's Gales to start off with, and... It's 53 to 47 in terms of the odds of uh, St. Mary's winning over us. So we're not expected to win that one. But I also wanted to look at the roster from this other screen, the roster screen, and let you see how the individual breakdown is. So if I'm looking at, you know, some of these players that are going to be in the starting lineup in terms of like, what kind of team I'm going to have. I, I really think it's going to be an outside team for sure because the center is really weak. Um, block, he's 7 out of 10. Defense, he's 3 out of 10. That's not good. Uh, defense, offensive rebounds, a 7 out of 10. That might be okay, but I'd really like to see a little bit higher rating there. Uh, on the outside, so point guard, Milton Grawyer, if that's how you say it right, he's going to be the starter. So I think that's the field goal jump shot. Uh, so 10, that's pretty good. He's a good free throw shooter. 7 out of 10 in passing. Handling not too good for a point guard. 5 out of 10, I'd like to see that a little bit higher. And then athleticism, 7. Uh, for a point guard, I think you're probably going to need 7 and above, so that might get me by. Ben Martin, another guy I'm going to be depending on. Good jump shot, good free throw. Uh, scoring, though, what is that? Or is that screen? I'm not sure what that rating is. But pass, pretty good passer. Handling, okay. Pretty good offensive rebounds, good steals. So defensively, he might be my best player as well. Uh let's see. The power forward. I was wanting to look and see how good he is. Really, his ratings, they're pretty balanced in some areas, but, you know, not too not too great. I don't know if I'll see a lot of scoring from him, but he probably will be my inside guy. He's 6 out of, uh, six out of 10 in that department. So I'm hoping there's balance here, but maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm doing some wishful thinking there. But that's... Uh, 
just to give you an idea of how the, the ratings are, they're pretty comprehensive if you're familiar with uh, out-of-the-park baseball. kind of works along the same level. I mean, you're going to have a lot of uh, skill sets here that the guys are rated on, and then that's going to contribute to their overall rating and potential rating. Um, the, higher, the higher you get on in these individually, of course, the better you're going to be. You look for balance. Um, I, I do think I have some holes here the closer I look at this, but hopefully we'll get through it. In terms of depth, this is another key aspect of the game. It's something that took me a little bit, took me a little time to figure out uh, in the previous version, but it's really key. Uh, you have all these different uh, these different charts here, and, and how your players fit into the mix. Um, it's based on minutes. So, in an ideal world, you know these guys don't get injured or fouled. You got starters are going to play the first six minutes, except for your center, where I don't have a lot of depth. He's going to go for the first ten, and then you'll have the backup in there for, say, the next uh, six in terms of the center, and then you know back and forth. Some of these guys get four minutes, but what I'm hoping, I'm not going to play around with it too much right now. But what I'm what I'm hoping is some of these guys who are coming back next year, uh, like uh, point guard. Cunningham, who's who's got a three potential, good passer. You know, I'm hoping to get him some some play time so that he develops a little bit. Maybe even give Mike Ivory, who's a freshman, might give him some play time. But the more play time they get, you know, the the better their potential and and actually their overall ratings are, are going to get better too. So there's practice as well. A lot of things involved in this game, uh, but um, there's a practice plan that you can set and I think the guys can develop a little bit from practice but this is mainly just to get them game fit it's when they're actually playing the games that you're going to see their ratings start to, to tick up and they're going to start <clears throat> developing there so that's how we look I'm not going to go too, too in depth and too many other screens for the team uh, you'll see there's things like strategy uh, this is going to be mainly how you run the game. And it's going to take me, I think, a few games to see how this team plays in terms of what offense I want to run, uh, the defense. And uh, I'm not as strong basketball knowledge-wise as I am with baseball, so it's probably going to take me some time to figure that out. But you do have a lot of options, and, and these will come into play once you get started in the games. Uh, some of this other stuff I, I won't go into right now, except for recruiting. Just briefly want to touch on that a little bit. Because of the, all the guys that I'm losing, I've got five scholarships to offer for next year. <clears throat> so I do have probably the guy that I was hoping to get out of all the, the players that I scouted. Um, this is a... A three-star player, his position rank is 65, and this is in the south re southeast region. When you start the recruiting, you, you basically recruit by region, and unless you're a big school, you're probably not going to be recruiting nationally. It'll take time. I mean, with Austin P, if I you know build up a team that wins the championship, conference championship perhaps, or is comp competitive, makes the tournament a couple years, prestige will go up. Then I can expand a little bit, but for now, with the prestige of where we're at, where we're starting this game, I'm pretty much going to have to go with the same the the southeast region where we are and get the best players that I can convince to come onto my uh, onto the team. So that's been the struggle with with recruiting, but I'm still pretty happy with that Scott Jensen at shooting guard. I think. He may even have a chance to, to come in and start as a freshman. But the rest of the guys, I'm really struggling to fill out those five scholarships. I've got a two-star point guard who is um, just a C-rated overall, but maybe there's some potential there at two stars. Uh, coming out of high school, I like his assist totals. That might uh be a good sign. His passing and handling are rated pretty high. That might correlate into really a better rating than the point guard I have now. 
He currently favors us as his top school. I've already got, offered him a scholarship. I'm hoping it's just a matter of time. We're not to the signing period yet, uh, but he hasn't committed either. So I'm, I'm not holding my breath, but I hope he does. Mike Mallett at center, which that, you know that's probably the biggest question mark I'll have going into next season. It's another C-rated player, but I think he has some good defense, probably better defense than the center I have right now on the team. <clears throat> if I'm able to sign him, uh, this guy might turn out to be uh, the starter as a freshman next year too. But he currently favors us as his top school. Hopefully that's uh, going to stick. I've offered him a scholarship. And then from there, I mean, this is another shooting guard just really to kind of fill out that roster. He's currently – we're currently just fourth in terms of his top ten schools. I've offered him a scholarship. There's no guarantee on this one. Um, there's some things that you have to do with recruiting. Uh, you, you, you make a pitch. You visit the player. You, you get him to visit your school. I think I've maxed out what I can do with this guy, so I think it's just going to be have I done enough to get him to commit to us. Uh, but I do like his ratings in the scoring and shooting department. You know, He would at least be a, a good backup to Jensen for next year. Other than that, I was hoping to pick up one more, um, I think it was power forward is what I was looking for. I was wanting two shooting guards, no, two centers. So I've really been trying to focus on centers. And this is the re recruiting screen just to kind of give you a, an idea of uh, what you're up against with recruiting. So these are the full recruit list for me from the Southeast region. Now I can break this down to just the interested recruits, meaning these are the guys that I've been working with, we've been back and forth with, and they're either <clears throat> still in the running or I've got to do some more work. You see Mike Mallett, he's warm on the scale, uh, which I think the scale f goes from none cool to warm. I haven't seen anything higher than that yet. But I've visited him. He's come to the school. Again, I think I'm pretty maxed out. You can, um, depending on the, the time period uh, that you're looking at, we're in the quiet period right now. And if you click this calendar icon, it'll give you all the different recruiting calendar dates. In the quiet period, for instance, you can call recruit, watch film, host recruit for campus visit, but you can't do what you can do in the evaluation period, which is you can't. Uh, visit him live and then the contact period you can visit the recruit at home and then the dead period you can't do anything except call recruit watch fi game film so we're getting close to that early signing period <clears throat> I would like to have most if not all of my uh, recruits locked in by then but if I could just get three out of the five I'd be happy so what I'm going to try to do and I'll do this before we get to um simming ahead and playing a game. I'm going to look at who's out there again and see if I can make some inroads with these guys. Kevin Benton is another two-star center that I've, I've worked with. I think he has visited us at our campus. I've been to see him. I've, I've watched the film on him. He is, we don't even know what his top 10 schools are. Uh, I can give him a call and see if, no, I can't even call him at this point. I really don't think I've got a chance with him now because I've been working on him so so hard. Now, Antoine Hill, I think, is the same deal. I don't think I can call him. I think the last time I tried to call him, he, he was uninterested. I can, so I'm going to give him a call, see what he see what he does. But this is how the, the uh, contact works. So you've got some a few choices you can make here. But what you're wanting to really do, look at the pitch areas. You want to find out what is in or what this guy is motivated by when he's looking for a school. So I know that program facilities are high. I've already got that from him. I wonder what playing time's like. He won't answer. So usually when they're not answering, that's a pretty good sign that they're not interested. Uh, and I've kind of, I can host the recruit if he will come to visit, but I, I don't think he will. Let me see if he will. Nope, he declined. So I don't think he's going to be an option for me. So now I'm, I've I just got two more guys left. The ones who are gray, they've already committed to schools. Desmond Powell, 
I mean, I would take, I would take, I guess, what I can get from him. I mean, uh, he has visited the school. I'm going to look at my email here, inbox, to see if, if, uh, so, Desmond Powell, maybe he's scheduled and hasn't visited yet. Yeah, I don't see his name in there. So it looks like maybe he's scheduled to visit, but he hasn't visited yet. Yeah, he is scheduled. So we're waiting to, to, to get him to campus and see if that impresses him. If it does, he might be the other center I'll be looking at. Justin Miller, this guy, he is in Louisiana. I don't know if he will, no, he won't even come to the school. So if I can't get Powell as a center, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might have to just look at the full recruit list and try to go through some of these one stars at the very bottom and see if I can get anybody here interested. But, you know, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of options. Bobby Sharpie has no interest in the school at all. Um, I wonder if I could even host him. No, he declines. But this is kind of just... This is what you're up against with the recruiting. It can be, I don't think it's tedious personally, but it's definitely a challenge. It's just that when you get those things, when they start clicking and falling into place, where you've got a, uh, for instance, like Jensen, the guy that I signed, or uh, got the uh, commitment from, when it starts falling into place, when you realize, hey, I, I've kind of given him a pitch that matches what his uh goals are as a recruit he's visited the school and he's been impressed with it um, and he's your his top 10 school once it falls into place you know you kind of get a feel for okay when when's the time to offer him now it is uh, you send it out there and hope you get a commitment uh, but it's just a lot of kind of trial and error before you get to that point so if I can't get that center mm. I'm going to be in trouble I think I, I might even have to look at um I might have to even look at something like a uh, power forward and, you know, maybe some big power forward that I can move to center. Um, so let me look at what I'm looking at for interested recruits in the power forward. So I got this Rick Rice. I mean, is it possible that you can move him to center? I, I don't know. He is, you know, he is kind of interested. We're third on his list. You know, if, I may just have to give him a try. I mean, he's he's uh, good in defense, not so great in rebounding or shot blocking. So it would be a gamble, but uh, that might be the option I have to look at. But this week looks like I'm not going to have a whole lot I can do um, in terms of recruiting. I think I will, while I'm here, though, have this guy visit our school, see what he thinks about it. Maybe I can lock him in, move move uh, Austin P up from third to first on his list. And, you know, it's not a great backup plan, but maybe it'll work. Now, going back to the dashboard, <clears throat> I want to go ahead and advance. When we click this button, it's going to put us into the... Uh, the schedule of, of games. It's going to just show the Ohio Valley Conference right now, but you could actually do it by conference, or you could just show, I guess, every... Uh, I don't see a choice to show every team there, but I think that's something that's going to be... Uh, that I believe there's a new update that's been released since I picked this one up that addresses that. So I'll just go ahead and play this first game. You can see the game simming here in the background. One other thing I think I, I didn't mention, but it's important to mention, there's a pretty decent community around this game as well. And when the game, if you, if, if you were, were to purchase the game, um, it's going to come with like some default leagues, conferences, I mean, and uh, teams. You know, the, the logos, the the mascots, the team names, those are going to be different probably. Um, so if if you really want to do the college um, 
actual NCAA where you know you can choose from teams you know you would have to download uh, a mod gosh let me see if I can I forget the name of the mod to be honest with you at the moment but it's going to be at the Wolverine studios.com under their community uh, forum there should be a mods category and it'll show up probably the first one there it's like under the draft day sports college basketball 20 mods and I, I wish I knew the guy's name and put it together. Uh, he, he actually may, it might show his name under the forum, but he did a great job. A lot of work was put into this. It kind of reminds me, if you're an out-of-the-park baseball player, it reminds me of the early days of the out-of-the-park baseball where they were putting a lot of, um, where you had a lot of player, big player community and a lot of add-ons were kind of generated by that community. Uh, but the I don't. I couldn't imagine playing the game without this mod, and it works seamless once you get it loaded. I didn't have any problems with the previous version. Don't expect I'll have any problems with this one. So now we've got the one day of games out of the way. We're going for the next day's games. A lot of big scoring games there. Of course, we're early in the season. You're probably going to see uh, this. Is probably where you're going to see some of the bigger. Um, you know, the bigger blowouts. If you were, I think you could go back to, say, previous day, see the scores. Uh, again, I think, unless I'm just missing the, unless I'm just missing the choice here, that gives you every conference. And I think, I believe I saw some chatter on the forum that it, it's going to show you everything. Um, but you can see, at least you can see how the, Ohio Valley Conference teams did. Arizona, currently ranked 11th, beat Murray State. Tennessee Tech, a big, big win over Siena. And then the first day, I think there was at least one or two games. Yeah, Eastern Illinois, a big two-point win over Dartmouth. So now back to the 15th. Finally got our game against St. Mary's. St. Mary's coming into this game 1-0. and So we'll get to play Sim, and it's going to go through all the games that are set to Sim for the day. And then it will get to our game. We'll take a look at the gameplay screen. So I'm going to go, um, we're going to be home, which is good. And human control for sure, 2D gameplay. And starting lineups, I've already seen the scouting report, um, something I didn't show you guys, but a scouting report is generated before like a week or so before your games cause you, so you can kind of see the matchups. Um, Probably should have showed that already. This doesn't really give you how you match up in terms of you know which which side's got the advantage here, but uh, they're going to have some pretty good players, I bet. Now go to tip off, and then we'll look at some of the settings. Now this again, this is basically some of the work from uh, that mod creator. Uh, put together a lot of the logos that you see on the backgrounds, the court logos, so that you know if you're playing home, you'll see your team name and you know the OVC logo. Uh, it really ha adds a little bit to the immersion there. Uh, I don't know if there's any anything that I'm going to try too much here on the screen. This is my first actual first gameplay um, with this version. I'm not going to do any double teams or anything like that. Um, defensive options, I probably, I want to do an auto switch, which is probably going to go from man to man and probably a 1-2-2 two, two zone, I believe, or 1-3 one, zone, one zone. And then for offense, I think I'm going to go balance for now, but I may have to go more to the outside. Depends on how the team's shooting looks. I'm going to speed up the gameplay a little bit, and then we're just going to make sure on the options. One thing I'm going to make sure. I'm going to enable auto sub. That's a pretty big one to check. If you've got your depth charts in there, the AI should handle it for you. If you don't, you run the risk of kind of getting uh, caught up in the game and, and forgetting where you are, and you might have some tired players out there. So I definitely recommend you do that and so let's go ahead and start the tip off uh, so already right, we got a dead ball nope it's another dead ball I would really like to not 
stop the game anytime there's a dead ball. But I'm not seeing that. Maybe I'll have to work on that. No score so far, though. It's been back and forth. Ah, uh, finally a score. No. Out of bounds. St. Mary's ball. And first score of the game, a three-pointer from St. Mary's. We've come back with a two-point basket. A lot of things going on. That's the thing about basketball. There's so much action. Uh, it's not like baseball where the play-by-play -play is a little... Oh, uh, we got... A foul on uh, foul on St. Mary's. And looks like uh, he makes both free throws, so we're up. Finally, first lead of the game. Defensive foul, first foul of the game. Dead ball, and looks like he threw it away, so it should be Austin Peay's ball. Now we throw it away, turnover. And that may have been, no, there's a two-pointer basket so we're up six to three ah, six to five can't get the shooting going now one of the things that you can do too you, you got the stats down here um, shows you like field goal percentages things like that individual stats that's new for this game I think in the previous game you could see the team stats but you had to click an extra button to see the individual stats, so that's kind of cool. Ah, not much going on here. So, two fouls, though, on Kenny Strong for St. Mary's. They may have to sit him down. Another defensive foul. So, fouls looks like uh, team fouls four for St. Mary's already. Ah, we're up eight to five. Oh, eight, eight, three-pointer. I think they've hit two three-pointers. We haven't hit any. 10 to 8. Definitely some back and forth going here. 10 to 10. I think I mentioned earlier, I mean, uh, St. Mary's, the scouting report had them at like a 53% chance of winning. Another defensive foul. That's their, I think, fifth team foul. Uh, but we can't convert. And that's usually, and that's inside, really. Field goals were four for eleven. Uh, not good. And we picked up another foul. And another three pointer. They are three for six for three pointers. Mm, not good. We may have some subs coming in here. Timeout. It's our ball. Ah, oh, good play there. Twelve thirteen. Another three-pointer. They're four for seven. I think we're going to have to to five for eight. Um, Six-team foul. I think I'm going to try to get these guys to shoot more outside and see if that makes a difference. And that it may have a three-pointer. That's uh, our second three-pointer of the game. Out of bounds, St. Mary's ball. Ah, another three-pointer, six for ten, and it's four-point lead. Twenty-two twenty. That was a slam dunk. Travel. Uh, I think that's their sixth turnover of the game, and we tied it up. Twenty-two twenty-two. We're playing pretty good. Uh, a little bit better than I thought at this point. Back and forth. Twenty-four twenty-four. Uh. They're going to win the inside game. I think if they figure that out, even though they're 6 for 10 and 3-pointers, I think if they figure out that they can win that inside game, they can roll all over. So, oh, another 3-pointer. And we're up again. I think it's only the second time we've had a lead in this game. Timeout. So we got six minutes left in the first half. Um, ah, we threw it away. That was our fourth turnover of the game. And we come back with a defensive foul on the other end. Our shooting field goal opportunities is not too bad, 11 for 21. That's uh, over 50%. But they keep draining those three-pointers, 7 for 13. 
Oh, slam dunk. We're still up by two. Uh, turnover. Tie game. Pretty fast-paced game so far. Oh, he misses the slam dunk. He misses the, the layup. Ah. Not sure if that was a layup, but he, he should have made that one. And we've got another foul, Richard Chepson. So we're, we've kind of uh, evened them in fouls almost, six to five. Um, slam dunk, still keeping the, the lead. And we got a turnover. Can't, just can't gain any distance from them right now. A defensive foul, that's their seventh, so that should put us at the line. Third foul for Jim Fowler. He hits the first one and makes the second one. So free throws are four for four, and we're up by four. And another turnover, so we got a chance, hopefully, to go into the halftime with a, a decent lead. If another foul, their eighth team foul, goes to the line, misses the first one, makes the second one. So we're up by five. Ah, oh, turnover and a big slam dunk. We're up by seven. And threw it away. Uh, home field, or home crowd getting into it here. And another foul. That's going to be their ninth team foul. And he misses the, the one and one. Ah, he did, he did not drop it at the half. So 38 to 31. We got a good run going there. Uh, takes us to... The team screen, see what we're doing here uh, individually. Player of the half, Mike Holland, center for St. Mary's, I guess. Or is that for us? No. Our bench center, 11 minutes, 9 points. Not a bad thing. This is, I wish you could, you know, there's something they may have to work on for future versions, but you can't, these are not clickable. I wish you, you could click on the, uh, the player links here, but... Some highlights here for us. Um, points in the paint is the big surprise. 16 to 8. Second chance points, uh, not too much there. Fast break, another big surprise, 8 to 2. If you look individually, uh, I know Holland coming off the bench is, is player of the half, but Grower, who uh, I think is our point guard, if I'm not mistaken, maybe the shooting guard, he's doing pretty good. 8 points plus 1. That starting lineup, uh, all of them uh, really contributing to the game so far. Off the bench, you got Edwards, Samuel looking good. <clears throat> Cromer, Laws, coach's decision did not play. So uh, overall, pretty happy with that half. Let's go back and let's see if we can keep that momentum going and pull out a win. And this would be an upset, even though we're at home. And we start off with an early turnover, but... They can't convert, and they score first, 33 to 38, but then we come back, score. I'm still favoring the outside. Uh, I feel like that's where we started picking it up, so I don't want to. I don't want to change that right now. So we got a dead ball and another foul. So they get the first foul of the half. Team fouls. They're starting to. I think they're going to start to get into trouble pretty soon. We're up by 10, biggest lead of the game for us. Up by 12, 45, 33. And our first foul, no, Marty Anderson, is that? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I lost, lost a little bit here. That's, uh, yeah, that was on us, his third foul. Uh, foul on, on the other end. Makes first free throw, makes the second one. So we're still up by 12. And they might be getting cold a little bit. 7 for six, 16 on three-pointers. And threw, threw it away. Turnovers eh, haven't been too bad uh, for us. We're leading that in the turnover category, 14 to 8. Ah, another turnover, though. Can't let them get back in the game. 15 minutes left to play. A defensive foul. That was Holland's first foul. I think he's uh, off the bench. Another foul. So 
that's their third of the half, and that was the fourth on Anderson, so he's going to be gone, I think, for a while. And they're back within 10, turnover. They're back within eight. They could have a run going. Uh, this is going to take us to the line. Jepson makes the first one, makes the second one. So we're back up by 10. If they get hot again, it, it could be a, a tough second half. And we're cold right now, having a hard time sinking it. Turnover from St. Mary's, turnover from us. Eight-point game again. Ten-point game again. And he turns it over. So that's their 17th turnover. Done really well there. I think that's one of those things, if you win the turnover battle, uh, that's a big part of the game. And we throw it away. That's our 12th turnover. They throw it away. A little sloppy in the second half. And we haven't had the kind of run that we had in that first half. Ah, oh, but uh, good, good basket there. We're up by 12. But another foul, Ben Martin. Holland is out there now at center. He's a leading scorer on the team with 11, but we're up at 14. Shot clock violation. Good defense. <clears throat> and the defense, I'm just pretty much auto-switching. It's probably mainly man-to-man. -man. Uh, big three-pointer there. 11-point game. Eight minutes left. <clears throat> they could be uh, working on a... Oh, no, another shot point. Shot clock violation to this half. Good job on the defense. And threw it away. <clears throat> we gotta we gotta get the momentum going. That's one of those things, momentum, there's a momentum bar here that'll tell you which side it's going on. Um, right now it's Austin P. Uh, we're up by eleven. That's probably the biggest thing for that. And you can also see the the set that you have, whether offense or defense. So right now we're man to man in a one two two zone. On offense, oh, a big three-pointer. We're up by 12 again. They're getting some second-chance points this half, though. Uh, but 12 points, four minutes left. A foul on my column. We need to we need to put this one away. Big rebound. Ah, oh, yeah, he puts it back. 14-point lead. <clears throat> 11 points. They are nine for 21 in three-pointers. We are five for 13. Got cold in the second half. Oh, did he make that one? Nope, St. Mary's ball went out of bounds. It's two minutes left. Ah, we can't make it. We can't put it away. Doing a good job with rebounds uh, for the most part. They're out rebounding us 33-29, to 29, but, you know, going into this game, I didn't really think we were going to have much of a chance there. So it's an 11-point game. We have the ball. And we, th we threw it away. And they throw it away. So I, th I think time's running out on them. Um, there are some end-of-game things you can do here. Uh, stall offense, for instance. Uh, things like that. The way this game's been, I, I'm not going to worry too much about that. I think we've got enough of a gap. 13 points, 11 seconds. I think we can kind of let it go. But great first game, 66-53 win at home. I did not expect this, i got to be honest. St. Mary's is one of those teams, it was a toss-up, but I did not think I would beat them early like this. Um, so let's go to, it should jump to post-game wrap-up here. Oh, sorry, you do have to press the play, play button to get to that post-game wrap-up. <clears throat> I can see already Holland may turn out to be the player of the game for us. And I'm not sure why it's uh why it's taking so long to generate here. Hmm. 
did it lock up? Turn the game, or am I just not hitting the right button here? Press the play button to continue to post game wrap up. There we go. I don't know why I did that. Uh, but here you go. Uh, second half, 28 to 22 is the low scoring second half. Uh, overall, I'm very pleased with this, this win. Uh, looking at the team individually, Holland off the bench. I know he's not my starting center. Uh, I, I forget how he's rated. It's, it's not very high. Uh, but he did what we needed him to do. Martin got into, or was it Anderson? I forget who's the center. I think it must be Anderson, really. He got into foul trouble and wasn't a factor in this game. Five get fouls, he fouled out, actually. Uh, but the rest of the team looked good off the bench. Uh, Samuel, Edwards, those guys got some play time, good play time. Richard Jepson, the forward player of the game, 12 points, two assists, five rebounds. Uh, I believe he is rated the highest on the team. Uh, he he played 32 minutes, played about the most on the team. So a good start to the season. Um, now, if I were – we're early, of course, but if I were to now look at, say, the standings, uh, this is going to show the conference standings. We are 1-0. and Eastern Illinois, 2-0. and That's kind of a surprise. Um if I look at league leaders, and that's the entire association. That's going to show all the NCAA. But let me take take a look at the OVC here, see what we got, if we have any players uh, after that first game showing up on the leaderboards. So some good stats here as well, um, like points per game. Got a couple guys there at 13 and 12. Uh, assists per game. Ben Martin had four, uh, but you know the again if you're f familiar with out of the park baseball and uh, sports management management sims in general, I think this game covers a lot of it uh, of what you need for basketball and um, I'm looking forward to continuing this and I, I once out of the park baseball hits I may not have as much time but let me know in the comments if uh, if this is something you'd like to see more of and see me continue on with the season. I'll probably sim a few games offline or play a few more games offline. Might get back to, um, if not the start of the um, conference season, maybe you know somewhere late in in the those first eleven games. Uh, but as always, I appreciate you guys watching, liking, commenting, uh, subscribing to my channel. Get ready for some more videos, and again, just let me know what you think of this one, and I will see you next episode.